Good morning, everyone. Let me thank everyone for coming, Ambassador. Let me thank you for also being there at such short notice, Deputy Prime Minister, um, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Public Works, Mark Cummings, um, members of Foreign Affairs. This is an important morning for us in Barbados. Um, over the course of the last few months, you would have heard us speak as a government about the fact that we are we're in the process of negotiating and settling a uh, loan agreement with the Chinese government, um, with the Exim Bank of China to be more precise, for 230 million Barbados dollars or 115 million US dollars. The agreement that we will sign eventually will, in fact, with Exim Bank, be at the interest rate of 2% which is highly concessional, as you would appreciate, because if we went to market, we would be paying a lot more for the money that we're borrowing. Um, in order to facilitate that, the government of China has kindly agreed through this framework agreement that we will sign in a few minutes to be able to allow us to pay at an interest rate of 2% over 20 years while they subsidize the difference between that 2% and the market rate that the Exim Bank would normally say, um, settle, which would be somewhere between 45 to 5% over the course of the loan. Our calculations will tell you that when you look at that amount over the period of the 20 years, you're effectively looking at 85 million Barbados dollars in subsidy or the equivalent of 42 and a half million US dollars, and therefore we want, on behalf of the people of Barbados and the government of Barbados, to thank the people and government of the People's Republic of China for so graciously agreeing to provide that subsidy while allowing us then to service the 2% interest on the 115 million US, which is by far a smaller amount when you look at the market rates. This Scotland District Road Rehabilitation Project is particularly important to my government. Um, as you know, the Scotland district covers one seventh of the land area of Barbados and has been regrettably at the mercy of erosion and I almost want to say for too long for others it was ignored. When the slippage in particular started more than a decade ago, it was not contained and anything that is not contained eventually gets worse and the rate of attrition or erosion equally becomes worse. It is for that reason that my government took a decision early on that the rehabilitation of these roads is absolutely critical in spite of the fact that we are in an IMF program, in spite of the fact that we are in a COVID pandemic, in spite of the fact that we also are still recovering from the consequences, particularly with respect to housing, um, from Hurricane Elsa and the freak storm. Indeed, the reality is that there are 224 kilometers of roads, 56 roads to be precise, that will be done as a result of this loan. This is critical to the stability of a large part of our country and to those people who live in the eastern parishes, in particular St. Andrew, St. Joseph, St. John, um, in particular um, parts of St. Thomas um, and parts of St. Lucy, St. Peter. The truth is that early on in the life of, I almost said this administration, we forgot that it's a new administration, but early on in the life of our initial assumption into government, one of the major tour operators in Barbados took a decision to stop carrying tour buses on the east coast of this country. I don't think that people who are not Barbadian understand the significance of that, because the east coast for many Barbadians is that pride of place where we get to show the world the beauty of this country. And for us to have that deprived from us, both personally, for those of us who have family who come back, but also visitors who know nothing about the country, but who want to see the glory and beauty of the country, would have been a hard, hard pill for us to swallow. 
and therefore we set about from as far back as then in terms of trying to find the financing that is affordable and a mechanism for sustainable development of our roads. We continue to have to shore up a large part of that part of the island. That's why you see the government embark um, two years ago on a Gabion construction and stabilization program because we know well that the Gabions work and that they allow us therefore to be able to try to stabilize as much as we can. But this project more than any other, as we seek to deal with road upgrading, reconstruction of roads and major repairs to other roads, new asphalt paving, some bridge building, we believe that over the course of the next few years, over the life of this project, we will do much to stabilize the Scotland district. My government has also signaled the intention, as soon as it is able to do so, to get the Scotland District Authority up and running. The truth is that it was one of the last pieces of legislation that we passed under the Owen Arthur government in 2007. Our ability to be able to manage our fiscal space and all of the adjustments under the IMF program would not have made it possible for us to get the Scotland District Authority up and running before. But we are now satisfied, especially as we seek to turn the corner with this pandemic, that there must be a rationalization of institutions, particularly the Soil Conservation Commission, which is too narrow. And even though there will continue to be major work on soil regeneration, ironically, we've had the institution, but we've never had a major program of regeneration of soils, but only stabilization from the point of view of erosion. So that the Scotland District Authority looks at all of that and much, much more because it is about stabilizing the lives and livelihoods of the people living in the Scotland district, which, as I said earlier, is one seventh of the, the, the land space. Without more, I would like to invite His Excellency, the Ambassador, to say a few words, and then we proceed to the formal signing. Um, thank you. Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Honourable. Your Honourable. Uh, Prime Minister of Barbados. Your Honourable Deputy Prime Minister of Barbados. Yes, and the other officials from the government of Barbados, friends from media, good morning. It is my great pleasure to sign the framework agreement or concession of loan between the government of People's Republic of China and the government of Barbados, together with Prime Minister Mia Motley, which is of great significance in the pragmatic cooperation between our two countries. With the signing of this agreement and the loan agreement which will be signed afterwards, the Scotland District Road Rehabilitation Project will enter the phase of implementation and we are looking forward to the start of the actual work on the road as soon as possible. Which will surely facilitate enhanced commercial development and tourism-related activities on the East Coast and creating conditions for rapid economic recovery and development out of the influence of the COVID-19 pandemic. Last July, President Xi Jinping had a phone conversation with Prime Minister Mia Motley, during which the two leaders commended highly of the China Barbados long lasting friendship, exchanged views on the bilateral relations and international affairs of common concern, reached consensus extensively, and pointed out the direction of continuous development of the bilateral relations between our two countries. China attaches great importance to carrying out the cons consensus reached by the two leaders, the construction contra contractor for both the Center for Food Security and the Hope Agriculture Training Institute program, program, uh, project has been selected. And the advanced group of uh, the pro two projects are, is already in Barbados for the field preparation. The implementation 
plan for agricultural cooperation between Hunan province and the Ministry of Agriculture and Food and Nutritional Security of Barbados has been forwarded to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade for reviewing. Uh, the, the protocol on sending Chinese medical teams to Barbados is on the waiting list for signing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends from media, both China and Barbados adopt a people-centered approach for both of our two countries and a critical at, uh, at a critical stage of development. In China, we have embarked on a new journey towards building China into a modern socialist country that is prosperous, strong, democratic, culturally advanced, harmonious, and beautiful. And Barbados, under the leadership of Prime Minister Mia Motley, is striving, is striving to build a better life for its people. Our two countries could expand cooperation in infrastructure development, digital economies, new energy, agriculture, and other fields as well. The goal is to bring more benefits to our two peoples. China will continue to support the social and economic development in Barbados by doing what we can. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Ambassador. Let me just put one or two other things in context. Um, the East Coast is particularly vulnerable because of erosion, as I said, and therefore the issues pertaining to the climate crisis continue to be of concern to us because, as we saw in Brazil this week, a lot of rain in a short period of time can bring untold disaster to lives and to livelihoods and to property. And we pray that this stabilization work, therefore, will be able to make a significant difference to a number of people, the people of White Hill, the people of St. Simons, St. Saviors, um, the other areas um, in Glen Burnie, um, we go right across the country. These are real roads to protect real people, to protect real property. And this is not therefore speculative. For those who are concerned about the impact and exposure of debt, um, the Barbados government has a long and treasured relationship with the government of People's Republic of China. And therefore, um, in the same way that we have worked together in the past, we will continue to work. 2% um, of our debt is now currently held by the government and people of China. This loan will carry it when it is signed and the Deputy Prime Minister will sign the actual loan agreement as it is her ministry when it comes. Um, but that will carry our exposure to just about 4%. And what is even more important, and I want to thank the people of um, the People's Republic of China and the government for this, that we are working with Barbadian contractors um, um, Compact will be working with the labor road contractors that we have, and the labor is predominantly local labor. The Chinese um, contracting company will be bringing in its senior officials in terms of engineering and point of surveying, etc. And the government will also have its own professionals, and we believe that the combined approach will bring um, good order and a well executed and efficient project over the course of the next few years. Um, without further ado, I really do want Ambassador for you to convey to President Xi Jinping the complete gratitude of the people and government of Barbados with respect to bringing to the table resources that can help us and the deliberate decision to allow the government of the People's Republic of China to carry the interest costs to the tune of 42.5 million US dollars over the course of the 20 years of the loan is a significant contribution to the benefit and well-being of the people of this nation. And I therefore want you to personally convey, um, to convey the personal gratitude of myself and my government to him for the continued development support. And with that, I think we can yeah, have proceed. Have thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister.
Thank you.